Welcome to this organic podcast on problem solving. What we're going to look at is a standard problem that you might expect out of an aldehyde and ketone section. We're going to be looking at a Wittig reaction. To start off with, we're going to look at the problem. Now that we've seen the problem, let's get to solving it. First of all, ignore everything except the, the actual question. Which of the following compounds would be the major organic product of the following reaction? Since the reaction is given to us, we can start analyzing this without knowing what the choices are. That's the best way to do this type of problem. You don't want the distractors or the choices in a multiple choice question to start to distract you right off the bat. Now one of the other things this question has is it gives you a hint. Consider the stability of the phosphorus illid. To do this problem, what I'm going to do is just try and solve it without that hint. Because again, although it was provided here to try and make the question more uh, easily answered, or to locate the answer, we want to try and ignore that. Okay. Of course, there's some base knowledge you're going to have to know with this. First of all, we're going to have to be looking for the major organic product. Of course, the sign here gives us a good hint. Now, major means significant. So we're not looking for the highest yield. This is major, right, and not majority. When we think about it, a phosphorus illid, we do need to know what's going to be happening here. What's going to be happening in a phosphorus illid is that we're going to have the phosphorus reacting with the carbonyl. If you know the mechanism, and it's always good to study with the mechanisms, you can actually work through the mechanism here to get the answer. Remember that a phosphorus illid is going to have one of the reasons is the phosphorus illid is that it has a zero ion shown as such. If we look at this and look at a two-step type mechanism, we can think about the nucleophile here attacking the electrophile, leaving group leaving. So right off the bat, we know that we're going to have carbons combining with carbons. Again, just simple analysis. Oxygen negative is going to react with phosphorus positive. Going to end up with this four-membered intermediate. And at this point we do need to know something about the mechanism and what are the products that are here. The oxygen phosphorus makes very strong bonds. So one of the driving forces here is to create that oxygen phosphorus bond. This, of course, leaves the carbon-carbon bond. But this carbon-carbon bond, I'm going to show it first as just the generic. But what we're going to need to know is, is this going to be adding in a cis or a trans fashion? So the question I have to do now that I've gotten the fact that I'm going to be making a carbon-carbon double bond here is, is this going to be cis or trans? So the second level of the question, after we know what the projected product is, is do we know the difference between cis and trans? For the cis and trans, if this is a unstabilized illid, then I'd expect it to be cis. If it is a stabilized illid, then I'd expect it to be trans. Okay. For that, we need to analyze our illid. And for stabilization here, what we're going to be looking at, of course, the zitterion, or the charge-separated species, and the question is, can that negative charge be stabilized, or is that negative charge isolated? Well, in this case, we've got the pi system right next to it that it's in conjugation with. 
So we're going to be able to stabilize that as this resonance contributor. So therefore, this is going to be a stabilized yield. So that means that our product should be the E or trans product. So going back to our previous page, we can see that this over here should actually be the trans, which means that I'm going to draw this double bond in this fashion. Okay. All right. So then let's look at our choices. Okay. Here are, are our choices. So once we have our choices, then we can look. Now, they're not drawn like we've seen before, but let's go ahead and analyze these real quick. Okay, would we expect a phosphorus double bond or an exchange the other way? No. So that leaves this one here and that one. So which one is in the cis and the trans? Well, to help on this, let's put in our hydrogens. Okay. Here we see the two hydrogens on the same side, so this one's going to be cis or the Z form. This one over here, we see the two hydrogens on opposite sides, so this is my trans or R form. So therefore, of course, since this is the trans, that's going to be our product. So now we look at our choices, and of course, there's only one, the four. So our correct answer is D. One, of course, is exchanging it the opposite way where the phosphorus exchanges. We can eliminate this pretty fast because a Wittig reaction is a carbon-carbon bond forming reaction. So we're not going to be exchanging or doing metathesis in the opposite direction. In number three, what they were doing is actually combining or coupling the two reactions. Phosphorus ilids don't do coupling, so therefore we know that that's out. Um, C, of course, was the wrong confirmation. Now, the ones that you may be tempted to do would be F. F would suggest that you do, don't understand that Wittig reactions can be selective. Also notice that it says equal mixtures. In this case, we're going to get a majority of the four, but the majority is going to be so significant that we're not going to equal, get a um, significant amount of the cis. So F, although it is a very good distractor, is the wrong answer. I hope this helped show you how to work through a standard Wittig problem. Remember to always try and do these reactions as if they're free response. That'll help you work the problem out and get the right answer without being distracted.